Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship. Welcome here to Riverside Park United Methodist Church. Our mission is to empower others to abundant life in Christ. And so if you're here for the very first time, we're especially glad you're here. If you're here for the first time in a long time, welcome back. Um, and we especially want to say welcome to those who join us online um, or even those who watch us later, maybe if you're watching this even years from now. We are grateful for this time to worship together. A few announcements, again, for those here in the sanctuary, we are observing social distancing, so, you know, be mindful of that six-foot radius. We ask that you keep masks on, make sure you're covering your nose and your mouth. Um, and then, unfortunately, right now, we are not having congregational singing, um, but the choir, I promise, is fantastic, and they will sing on our behalf. Thank you, choir. Um, and so for those here, we invite you. The lyrics will be on the screen. I know I have, I have instead of singing out loud, I have read the lyrics and sought to seek into them a little bit deeper, um, kind of prayerfully. And so as the choir sings, I will be praying with the choir. So, um, And then as far as calendar things going on, this Wednesday begins the season of Lent in the church. Lent is the 40 days of scriptural devotion that leads us to prepare for Easter. Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. And the long-standing church tradition back to the 11th century is to mark our, ashes, mark our foreheads with ashes as a sign of our repentance, uh, as a sign of our, our humility before God. But even before the 11th century, the tradition wasn't just ashes, but the tradition was ashes and sackcloth. So this year, we're going really old school biblical for Ash Wednesday, and we're going to use sackcloth as that symbol, not only of our repentance, but also our grief. And so we're going to gather this Wednesday at 630 to, to show humility, to begin the holy season of Lent. Um, but also part of this because of the sackcloth used is in, in terms of mourning is we're going to give our griefs to God as well. We will have that service online for those who wish to gather with us. And if you're in the sanctuary or you want to come to the church office because you can't make it Wednesday and you want to pick up your, um, your sackcloth to go, we do have on the very back next to the door, there's a big old basket of strips of sackcloth so you can have yours and take it home. Uh, also coming up this month, on February 21st, um, we have a, oh, I'm sorry, the Ash Wednesday begins the season of Lent, um, and we will, if you got your church newsletter, on the back of the calendar, there were 40 scriptures. Our theme for Lent this year is Be Love, and so a couple of the challenges, we're, we're the church challenge for Lent, we've got a scripture a day challenge where there's 40 different scriptures. We will be posting those online, emailing them out, putting them up on the church website. We're also going to have a list of, uh, of challenges, ways you can live out love in practical ways to show that to your neighbors, maybe your community maybe those who live with you. Um, there's simple acts of kindness, like helping your neighbor bring in a garbage can or um, um, sending, sending a card to somebody that may need it, that kind of stuff. And so we're asking, we're inviting you to abide in the love of God for that scripture day challenge and also to find ways to live that out in your community. So that's part of the Lenten season, but we invite you to prepare and be thinking about how to live this season holy before God. And then towards the end of the month, on the 21st, February 21st, we have had a group that's been doing, um, that's been doing some reading um, in terms at the intersection of faith and anti-racism. And so, especially since this is Black History Month, we are reading a historical book this month. It's, the, it's a Jacksonville local book. Um, it's called, It Was Never About a Hot Dog and a Coke. Um, and it's, it's, it's really fantastic. It's hard, but it's about Axe Handle Saturday here in Jacksonville. So it's, um, it's part, of, part of discipleship is in anti-racism is discipleship work because it is living out love for our community and being aware of things that may, may potentially hold us back from loving our neighbor. And so if you want to be part of that conversation, it'll be a Zoom call on that Sunday afternoon at 3. You can email Linda LaBelle to be part of that conversation. Um, but then also on that same day, a little bit later, we've got a kid's 
Zoom game night for third graders through seventh graders. Um, it's really fun. Dakota does a great job of making them interactive. If you know somebody who would like to be part of this, I don't care if they live in Alaska, they, the gift of online ministries right now is we are ministering way beyond the walls of the church. And so if you know somebody that's that third to seventh grade age range um, and they'd like to participate in these game nights, you are welcome to, to share that link with them. So I know that we've got a lot of other, other things going on, but just for now, especially for those gathered, I invite you to turn, wave at the folks around you, just to remember you're not alone, you're here with others. Maybe send a message or a, a text message to somebody else just to reach out, connect, share the community of Christ. to worship by responding with the text in bold. We are called to gather in worship as a beloved community. Live out the love of Christ. We are called to love God and love our neighbor. Let us live out the love of Christ. We are called to put others before ourselves and to seek the good of the city. Let us live out the love of Christ. We are called to faith and hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. 
let us live out the love of Christ. Our scripture reading is found in Mark 9, 2 through 9, and please be prepared to join me on the bold text. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. When a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Thank you, Mark. At this time, if you are fifth grade or younger, and I know we've got a couple of you up in the balcony, and I know there are folks joining us online, hello. We want to make sure that you know you are part of the church, and so this kid's message is especially for you guys. My favorite thing about Valentine's Day, oh, gotta get the glue going. My favorite thing about Valentine's Day growing up was decorating the boxes. I love decorating the boxes. But my second favorite thing about Valentine's Day, besides decorating the boxes, we'll just put all this right on here, was getting the Valentines. And I remember in third grade, I had a huge crush on Matthew Rogers. And I remember so excited, being so excited to get his Valentine hoping he would write a little personal note inside. And I remember opening it and it saying, Happy Valentine's Day, Matt. And that's all it said. But I remember looking at it for forever and a day, thinking, what does that mean, Happy Valentine's Day, Matt? Does that mean he likes me? Does that mean he really likes me? What does that mean? I kept reading between the lines, trying to find out more. Ugh. This box is heavy because what's inside of it are some other Valentines. And what's in here, these other Valentines, are Bibles. Because really, you could say, the Bible is like a Valentine that God's written us. But it's different than the one I read in third grade. Because when you read the Bible, you can read all the incredible stories about God's chosen people. About people that belong to God who he loves and he cares for. But when you read the Bible in between the lines, what you see and you hear over and over again is the story of how God loves people. And he doesn't just love people that were in the Bible from a billion years ago, but that God is love, and that he loves you, and that he loves me, and that he loves all of us. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Amen. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. At this point, we're going to pause and we're going to pray. Uh, if you are worshiping with us online and you have particular prayer requests, if you list them in the comments, we will go back, I will go back and I will be in prayer for them this week. Same for those in the congregation. If you have prayer requests, and I'll be outside the sanctuary. If you just want to let me know, I would love to be praying for you this week. And I know one prayer request that has been named is we have um, someone in the church, their daughter, Amanda, had her last session of radiation this week. And so we celebrate that. We celebrate that indeed. And on our, I know on our church Facebook group, our family group, we've had some prayer requests for, them other, for some other folks as well. And so as we, as we come before God, we also lift up others, um, to lift up others before God in our prayers as well. So let's, let's pray. Gracious and holy God, you who created all things in the beginning, you who are light in the darkness, you who call us to love our neighbor, you who gathered on the mountaintop with your followers, you whose very face was transfigured by the glory of God, we pray that our lives, too, can be shaped and changed, transfigured and transformed by your love and your goodness and your glory. We pray for our own hearts, Lord, that we would better grow in love for you and love for our neighbors, not just in theory, but in action. Lord, may you fill us. Fill us with your love. May you fill us to overflowing for love for our neighbors so that our actions will flow from hearts that are centered in loving others the way that you love them too. Lord, we thank you and we celebrate the ways where your glory has been present. We thank you that, um, that Amanda is finished with her radiation. We thank you for walking her through this process so far. And we pray that you would continue to be with her and her mom and her family. Lord, we pray and thank you um, that Gabe, who has been in the hospital for so long, is home. And we pray continued recovery and prayers for him. We continue to lift little Bo to you. And we continue to pray for Gordon and his family. 
Lord, we continue to pray for those who grieve this week, and we especially lift Terry up to you, who will have surgery this week. For these who are named, and for others whom we name before you in our hearts, Lord, we lift your people to you. We lift our prayer requests. We lift our, our burdens and our fears and our anxieties, and we give them to you, asking that in your love you would take them. We also give you our joys and our celebrations, Lord, asking that you would continue to be with us in your glory, that you would lighten hearts and call us together as your people to trust in you, to walk in your way day in and day out. All this we pray in your name, O Christ, and we echo the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. At this time, we're going to have a moment of offering. We do have offering plates here in the sanctuary. We have giving online. And again, I am incredibly grateful to be part of a church that even through the pandemic, we leaned into missions. We continue to provide free Wednesday meals for those who need them in the community. Uh, this month, we are hosting a few families off-site for Family Promise, which is a ministry that works for families that have children that are experiencing homelessness. Um, and so church, when we are faithful to God and we put God first in our finances and we're faithful in supporting others in the community, that's how we live into our mission, to empower others to abundant life. So at this time, may we lift our hearts, our prayers, our gifts, and our offerings to God, and may God bless us as cheerful and faithful givers. Amen.
of these gifts and offerings we offer up to you as we offer ourselves, and we ask that you would use us. Use us to bring your love and your glory and your goodness into this world. Use us to empower others to abundant life that we would know we are part of what your spirit is doing. Lord, we pray that you would form us in generosity and goodness and love in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. absolutely beautifully sets up our scripture reading today, which comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Hear now the word of the Lord. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over all my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a dimly, as though in a mirror. But then we will see face to face. Now I only know in part. But then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith 
hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. I love the, the children's message named scripture as God's valentine for us, like a message, God's message of love for us. Um, and so indeed, I can't remember if I've already said it in the service yet or not, but happy Valentine's Day. I know especially in the, the pandemic has led to some, some distance. And so if, if you are somebody that maybe hasn't received a Valentine's Day card or Valentine's Day gift this morning, um, then I, I found a couple, I found a couple Valentines that I wanted to share. These are Valentine's Day cards for the whole congregation and for, you know, the whole internet that may watch this. Um, and so I've got, there's two cards that I particularly loved. And the first one is, uh, if we could get it up on the screen. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait, we'll come to that in just a second. So the first one is a, a card that is, um, it shows the social distancing folks. It's got the two people six feet apart and it says, Valentine, in my heart, we are never more than six feet apart which I just, I love that. I love that when, like, when you love somebody, you care about them, you know, you're never quite any further away than you have to be, but also you love them enough that you're respecting social distancing. And the second one, this one I really appreciate. It's the beautiful poem. It says, roses are red, violets are blue. I want the vaccine so that I can hug you. There we go. Yeah, and that's, isn't that the hope? That would be the Valentine's Day hope for everyone. It's like, let's Let's hope for the day we all have the vaccine so we can hug one another and love one another, except for people who don't want to be hugged. You can continue to maintain that distance and we will respect that. So, <laughs> so indeed, joy to you on this day. But also, let's remember that Valentine's Day is, uh, you know, it's a card holiday. And what we are called to in the church is not just, you know, you may have heard folks joke about it, you know, bef the, the whole like, well, we don't, we don't celebrate Valentine's Day because we love one another all 365 days of the year. And that's true. I know my husband and I, a couple years ago, I told him, I said, I don't, I want the chocolate for Valentine's Day, but I don't have to have it the day of. In fact, I'm cheap enough that what we do in our household is we celebrate February 15th. Um, we celebrate 75% off Valentine's Day candy. That's how we Valentine's in our house. But there is something, I will say, the, there is something about the fact that there's a tangible time to say, hey, we are supposed to show gratitude and show love. We are supposed to tell the folks that we care about that we care about them. We are supposed to show that we care about them. And I'm not just talking about couples. I'm not just talking romantic love. I'm talking about like that deeper love that we see here in Corinthians 13. This passage is often read at weddings, but every time I read it at a wedding, I tell people, don't forget, this is a letter to the whole Corinth community. This isn't a love letter that was written to two people that are about to, to commit their lives to one another. This isn't a message for people that are dating. This is a message for every single person who claims to follow Jesus and live after the way of God. Because there is scripture after scripture that tells us God is love. God is love. There's a, there's a great one that says no greater love is, there's no greater love than this than to lay down your life for your, for your neighbor. And so too, we look at the work of Jesus Christ, the way of the cross, the sacrifice that, that Jesus gave is nothing but ultimate love. God pouring, God giving, God pouring out self-love is this amazing phenomenon that makes us a little bit less so that we can give a little bit more to those around us. But in becoming a little bit less, we become so much more because love is one of those many spiritual things that as we grow in love, we ourselves are also like affirmed and, and there's, nothing, there's nothing better than to be in that space where you are genuinely loving somebody whether it's a child or a friend or just a small act of kindness to a stranger where you just get that moment where you recognize this is somebody that God made and I am grateful for this person and I want to do what I can to love and su support them and connect with them. This is the love of Jesus that we're called to live. And not just think about, not just talk about, not just like stick on a bumper sticker or a, or a, a sticker that we put somewhere and say, that's pretty, yes, God is love. Like we're called to live it out in very real ways. And that's hard to do. Like when, it's, when it comes to actually 
living out love. Not only are we called to it, I mean, it's the difference between, you know, a nice, a nice couple that stands up there and they get ready to take their vows and they're very excited. Like, that's a beautiful, wonderful, like, tee-hee-hee kind of love. But, like, you want to know real love. Like, show me that same couple. Fast forward several decades and one of them is going through chemotherapy and the other person is, like, cleaning up the vomit. Like, this is that kind of self-giving or the love of a parent that is exhausted because they haven't gotten enough sleep, but they're still gonna be there when their kid needs them. Or the love of a stranger that shares the last of their meal with somebody else because they see that they're hungry too. Like this is love. And there's this Corinthians 13 passage is kind of the, uh, it's kind of the golden standard. It's the rubric, if you would. It was kind of a check and a balance of saying, hey, you who are God's people, be loving. And not just be loving, but it, it's, it's brutally honest when it says you can do amazing things, but if you're not loving, you're nothing. If you are, you can do all the right things, you can have all the right success, you can have all the money, you can have all the stuff, but if your heart is not loving your neighbor, it does no good. You can look awesome on social media and have all the great posts, but if you're not genuinely loving your friends, it's nothing. Nothing. And then it turns around and not only does it say, hey, love, like you have to love, it's the deepest of the deep, but it calls us to this love. It then gives us this exact example of saying, okay, great, are you loving? Well, then let me show you what love is. Love lived out looks like these particular things. And so the question this morning is for all of us gathered is the, the simple question of, do we call ourselves followers of Jesus? Is love in our lives? Are we living it out? Are we, are we people who are full of the love of God? Are we living into this wondrous golden rubric, if you would? And if so, and this is a, this is a prayer practice, you, you may have heard it done this way, but one trick, one way to kind of pay attention to that is to read this Corinthians passage, but every time it says the word love, instead of reading, reading the word love, put your own name in that passage. Or, or what we're going to do this morning is we're going to read the passage, but we're going to just read it in first person. So if we can get that up on the screen, we have the same passage. And I invite you just to read this with me. Read it as a proclamation of who we are as people of God. I invite you. Go ahead. Read it out loud with me. You ready? I am patient. I am kind. I am not envious or boastful. I am not arrogant or rude. I do not insist on my own way. I am not irritable or resentful. I do not rejoice in wrongdoing. I rejoice in truth. I bear all things. I believe. I hope. I endure. That's our call, right? Is to be people of love and live into those pieces. But here's the thing. How many of you, as you read that out loud, found yourself going, ooh, I don't know that I can honestly say all of these things, honestly. Yeah, right? Like, that's the reality, too, is we're called to this amazing, deep Jesus kind of love, and we don't always live that way. We ain't got it. And as a matter of fact, the, bare, the brutal, honest truth is that we can't do it by ourselves. Like, I would love to be able to say, like, well, and, and we live in a, and I would say if there's one thing that in this world everybody kind of agrees on, it's that we all should be loving, right? I don't know a single person that's like, nah, don't be loving. Like, I mean, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. We should be loving. But we're not just talking love for the sake of love. We're talking about love actually lived out in ways that make us patient and kind and gracious and not resentful, not irritable. Like, these are, these, this is the thing that's saying, hey, 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 it's not in you. We all agree that we should be this way. I think where Christianity kicks in, and this is where I believe in Jesus, my, again and again, my honest truth is that I can't, left to my own devices, I am cranky and impatient. I am irritable, and I am resentful, and I insist on my own way, like, all by myself, like, that's, that's the truth of who I am. But it's the call of Jesus and the scriptures like this that tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, 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 pay attention. Scriptures like this that call me back and remind me that even though I'm not amazing and patient and loving, even though I'm not that way, God says, you know what? I love you anyways. 
I love you anyways, even when you're not loving. Now, it's still there. God said, I mean, it's like, a, it's like a, you know, when, you're, when your kid does something wrong, right? You're like, dude, I love you. Don't do that again. <laughs> it's there. The scripture says, like, love as you are loved. God's like, I'm going to pour out love on you so that you can pour out love on others. And the grace of the story of Jesus, the grace of the story of the cross, is that we come to God and we say, all right, I believe that the world should be more loving. I believe that I should be more loving. I'm just not there yet. And this is where that transfiguration story that, that John wondrously read earlier kicks in. Because in the transfiguration, we see Jesus on the mountaintop. He's gathered with his disciples, the same disciples that have walked with him and seen him do all of the amazing Jesus stuff that he does. And they gather with him, and suddenly, in a moment, Jesus is transfigured. He's transformed. You see the glory of God on him. And the disciples go, oh, like, this is the Son of God. Like, it's a tiny moment where they, like, glimpse the resurrection and the power that is about to pour out later. The transfiguration story is the story that reminds us that we worship a God who not only loves, but who transforms us, too. The story of when we're called to follow and be like Jesus, what we're called to do is to stand so close to our rabbi, that the, stand so close to our Lord and our Savior, that the glory is, of God is reflected on him and shining on our face, so that as we are transformed in the love of God, the love of God shines out in us, too. And I've seen it. I've seen it in folks who have spent years and years and years praying to be more loving seeking the scriptures. I have seen it in folks that have said, look, I, I used to be cranky, and I just, at some, I kept giving it over to God, and I just realized that Jesus was transforming my life. The love of God is transformative. How do we become more loving? How do we live into this First Corinthians passage? Well, we, we keep coming back to God who is love. We keep coming back to this call and this remembrance of who we are. Because you see here, when the voice speaks and, and God says, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. We hear, number one, we hear the commandment that, hey, hey, we're supposed to listen to Jesus. And Jesus calls us to love our neighbor. Jesus says, most important thing, number one, love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. That's what you got to do. And then number two, we also hear God saying, this is my beloved. The last time we heard that was when Jesus was baptized, and the, 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 the voice from God came down and said the same thing then too, my beloved. And in our baptisms, we heard it too, when God said to us, we are beloved, we remember that this call is to love God and love our neighbor in very real, lived out ways. And so I guarantee you, if, if we sit with this Corinthians 13 passage, if the only thing we do is we read this same passage and we put our name there day after day, I am patient, I am kind, I am, not because we really are, but in this space of saying, God, make me this way. I believe in this. I want to follow your way. God transforms our hearts. And as God transforms our hearts, God's transforming the world too. That's essentially what we're saying is, God, make this world more like your kingdom and do it through me. That's, that's as simple as it is to say that's what it means to follow Jesus. But again, that's as complicated as it is from day in and day out. It's, it's nice to say, I want to be more patient. It's harder to say, I want to be more patient when you're right in the midst of an impatient situation. But that's our call, nonetheless, as we are called to follow after this God of ours. And this is this season of Lent. That's what we do in Lent, is we, we take these 40 days and we walk with Jesus all the way to the cross, to resurrection. We're going to say, God, put to death in me the things that are not living, or that are not loving, so that I can be reborn and come alive anew in your grace and your love. Jesus, the spaces in my life that are impatient, I give those up to you so that you can bring out a love and a grace that's different. Like we could go through each line of this Corinthians passage, and we will. We're going to spend the season of Lent looking at this particular chapter. Um, but we're also going to invite you personally to connect to God. That is, again, that's what Lent is. is we, we, put, we give things up as a sacrifice so that God's grace can work in us. As a church, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're doing a couple of challenges. Like I said, we've got the Scripture a Day Challenge. 
40 scriptures that will, a, a daily verse to connect us to the love of God. I mean, again, that's that, the call is to, to not just be loving, but also abide in God's love. Abiding in God's love is what helps us to be loving. And when we're loving to others, that brings us into us, into the love of God. Like it's that love God, love others, we hear that. We're also going to share a list of concrete ways to, to love neighbors. And we're going to do that as a community, not just in theory, because it's great if we all gather here and we say, yes, love is good. We should be loving. But when we walk out these doors, we got to live it out, y'all. We have to put concrete action to, to our faith. And I've seen that because it makes, a, like, small gestures can make a really big difference. I called somebody in the congregation just to check in. And they said, hey, I, I am so excited you called because I have to tell you, I just got a card in the mail from somebody else in the church that I haven't heard from a long time. And so I called the person who, I texted the person who sent the card and I said, hey, you sent a card to that person and I got to tell you, it meant a lot to them. And they said, oh, well, that just, all I did, we had a conversation in my Sunday school class and so I just figured, you know, why not live into it? And I sent the card. And so now, what started as a conversation about love turned into a card, which turned into a testimony that somebody shared with me, which has now turned into a sermon that I'm sharing with all of you, which has now turned into a moment where all of you are sitting here thinking, huh, I could send a card, or I could do this other small thing. Like I, and, and, and again, it's those concrete things that plug us in and really make a difference. To follow Jesus it can't just be with our thoughts and our heart. We've got to put feet and hands to it, too. So this is the season. This is the call. Is are we a church that believes and follows Jesus and lives into the love of God and grows in the love of God? Or are we a church that's going to have all the right stuff but no love? I'll tell you right now, one of the marks of this congregation is that this is a loving church. It's a warm and loving congregation and this is a world that needs that love and that warmth. And so keep it up. Live into the love of Jesus so that the love of Jesus can be lived out in you. So we're going to pause for just a moment. And I know this is, this is our, our theme for Lent that we'll be living into. You'll be hearing a lot about this in the next 40 days. Um, but I want to pause just for a moment to, to pray. Not just you praying to God and giving this season of holiness to God. But I'm going to ask you also to pray for this church. Pray for others around you that God would give us the courage and the strength and the conviction that we would be a church that's on fire for the love of God. That we would be a people that is transformed and living out this love in concrete ways. Will you pray that with me? Will you pray for our church and those around you? Let's pray. Lord, we do confess before you that we are not fully the Corinthians 13 people that we should be. We also confess that we, we want to be people. Or rather, we want to be part of this movement that is showing your love and sharing your love passionately. Because there's something, there's something powerful about passion and fire. And there's something amazing about real love and loving kindness. And so we pray that you would call us to this way, not just for the sake of love, but for the sake of following you, Jesus, because you showed us the way, you lived it out, you call us to it, and you, through your work of love, you set us free from the sins and the darkness that would hold us back. Through loving our neighbor, we are freed from selfishness. Through serving you, Lord God, we are saved from apathy. And so we ask, yes, 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 Lord, that you would connect us, that you would pour us out, that we would come to you again and again to be filled, that we could go again and again and pour ourselves out for others, that you would transform us through your love and by your love in the name of Jesus Christ. Use us. Use us. And let us live out your love. Amen.
to go and be loved, to grow in the love of Jesus. Is that call clear? All right. Well, then may you go and receive this benediction. May the love of Christ Jesus that is poured out, may that be with you. May the love of God that runs deeper than any sin, may that pull you deeper in love with God and love for your neighbor. May you go and serve and live and give. May you abide in the love of God and share the love of God in the name of Jesus. Go and be loved. Amen.